Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see, listen, we've had some big guests here. You know, we've had the great one, Wayne Gretzky. We've had the Jim Cramers of the world. We've had some pretty badass guests. But this is a band that, and you gotta tell me how this feels, six million singles. So I didn't even know for that until Soul I saw this thing. I'm like, what? mine only says five million on it. So, so it means it's moving. Yeah, they haven't even sent me the, the six million. Jimmy, why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are, what you're associated with, and then we'll get into why we're doing the show together. All right, well, uh, my name is Jimmy Stafford. I am the guitar player in Train, the rock band Train. And uh, yeah, we've had an amazing year. Save Crazy me San year, Francisco, right? our, our last CD has just been uh, doing great. It just keeps doing better. Actually, CD sales are, are just doing better and better with each single that we release because the singles just keep going to the top of the charts all around the world. We've just had an amazing year. And Hey Soul Sister is the most downloaded song of the year on iTunes. Yeah. Which is a pretty, I mean, you know, yeah. the, in the world of the Justin Bieber's, you know, right. and, and there's some pretty fanatical stuff going on right now. Nicki Minaj, oh my phone's on. Um, hey. And all that, you like that? That's Mr. Perfect theme music. I like that. That's got to be an incredible feeling. Yeah, it's, uh, you know what, I mean, we've been so crazy busy on tour this year that haven't we haven't even you. really had time to stop and absorb it all. We've been getting all these end of the year emails uh, this past <laughs> week, you know, like that it's the number one most played song in Australia and Ireland and all this stuff. And it's kind of like, you know, where you just kind of go, wow. And then, okay, then you go to work. And, <laughs> and you don't really have time to even to celebrate. toast or celebrate. So uh, we get some time off uh, over the holidays. And I have a feeling we're all going to go home and just kind of sit and, and... What the and heck just happened? You know, even yeah. New Year's Eve, we're going to be on uh, Dick Clark's rockin' New Year's Eve show. That's when you know you had a big Which, year. I mean, you know, I've grown up, we've sure. all grown up watching that show, and I'll actually, we pre-taped it. So right. I'll be sitting at home on New Year's watching Eve. Watching yourself. Watching it and celebrating the year that we've had. Finally, we get to, like, relax and celebrate. So for it. people who, you know, either fuck maybe not follow the band, I know everybody at this point has heard of you guys, you guys have been around for more than just, this isn't a five second overnight kind of thing, right? No, six, so, 16 years, and most people, you know, most yeah. of the world just knows uh, Drops of Jupiter, right? because uh, that was a big song worldwide too, yep. not quite as big as Hey Soul Sister, right. uh, you know, didn't reach as many countries, but uh, you know, it's like uh, our other hits um, were really only hits in the United States, like Meet Virginia and Calling All Angels and Cab and Ordinary from the Spider-Man yep. movie and stuff, but uh, yeah, I mean, to most of the world, it's drops Jupiter, and then nothing for like eight years, and then Hey Soul Sister. Sure. Man. And so, there's three of you, right? Yeah, there's three original band members. And and you are the wine connoisseur of the bunch. I am the wine lover. Yeah. And uh -huh. so, so, you know, one of the cool reasons, you know, obviously. You know, we love Train and all that. I mean, it's on my iPod and all that. But, you know, we're not going to just randomly have, you know, people on the show. There is a wine club that you've put together. Yeah. And so why don't you tell the Vaniacs out there about that? And, and Mott, let's link that up. So what's the URL of that? Uh, that would be uh, www.trainwineclub.com. Yep. All right, so Mott, link, link that up. So yep. why does a band have a wine club? You know, uh, Hey Soul Sister was just reaching much younger audience than we'd ever had before. And we've still got our diehard core fans that have been with us for 16 years now, uh, who are, you know, average 30 to 45 years old or something. And we just thought, you know, what a cool thing for us to like just do, um, start this kind of little wine community where we can blog and chat about wine. And, you know, cause that's something that uh, a lot of people in that age group have in common. And, and I love wine. I have wine in my dressing room every night. Every night? Um, yeah, you know, I don't drink a whole bottle before I go on stage. But Why not? I'll, I'll have a glass. <laughs> and, and, and Hector, my bass player, yep. uh, shares a glass with me before we go on. And then after we, you know, so, and we get... Uh, hold on, I, th I, th I, th I thought that was going to be good. And then after, you, you kind of... Afterwards, we finish the bottle. <laughs> got it, got it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Absolutely. So a lot of times you'll have something that's from lo locally. We we get local wines mostly because of the wine club. Yeah. Uh, you know I like to sample local wine. Sure. 
shirts, uh, you know, from around the world, story. you know, yeah. How did your love of wine start? Where were you and born? And it's not always a, a, a hit either. No, I'm sure it's some, not. Some places you, you wish you were <laughs> at, at a local Maybe a local beer instead. Yeah. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in a small town in Illinois, about an hour south of Chicago. Okay. Definitely not wine country. Right. Uh, more corn and yeah. bean country. Did you grow up a Bears fan? I still am a Bears fan, yeah. You know, like the Bears? I, well, as a diehard Jets fan, How we haven't like the Bears. Well, easily because uh, as a diehard Jets fan, we have a tremendously big game against you in two weeks. Yeah, and the and Jets are uh, not playing win. well. Yeah. we're desperate. So yeah, but you know what? The Patriots took care of my Bears. Yeah, that so that, but that was why I'm mad at the Bears. We needed you to win. I know. You know, so the whole thing. But anyway, so you grew up in Illinois. Were your parents wine lovers, or they didn't start? No, there? my so, parents were not, and still aren't. My mom, when she will drink white wine, but she puts ice. In her glass, I'm like, Mom. Yeah. So I give, I give her the cheap stuff. <laughs> Got it. You know, it's kind of like when you go to a, a Japanese restaurant and order the sake. sake. Like yeah. they, they always heat up the cheap stuff. That's you right. Know, the really quality sake is cold. It's cold. So it didn't start there. Did it start in college? Or I know the band's ba you know kind of based in San Francisco, right? So yeah. Did, did uh, you, you know move, what? Did you move I, to I think San Francisco? That's really where it started. In when I moved to San Francisco, which is when? Uh, that was. Uh, in '94, when we all we all relocated from different places in the country to form. How a band. did you guys meet? We met in different bands in Los Angeles. I see. Where, you know, I would drink wine casually once in a while. Right. But I don't think I really became a wine lover until I moved to San Francisco. Yep. And visited some of the uh, wineries, wineries up there and kind of, you know, got into the whole uh, vibe of the the wine community and like, wow, this there's like a lot more to it. Yep. You know, and. Uh, and that's kind of what I wanted to share with the Train Wine Club, yep. is just kind of reach out to those people, because there's a lot of people that just love wine. Plus, for the last 11 years, uh, I was living in Las Vegas, and my favorite wine uh, restaurant was right down the street from my house, a place called Grape Street, yep. and it's a wine bar. Yep, I know it. And you know, I got to be really good friends with the, the owner and the bartenders, and, and they educated me quite a bit on wine, too. And, uh, and they would always, you know, I'd go in and they'd try be like, this, hey, try, try, this. try this one. You sure. know, and and so it. where is your palate at right now? Uh, where is, at the State of the Union, where is your, your palate right now? What are you really, like, vibing on? Um, as far as... Varieties or for, well, regions or countries? You know, is there anything that's really, you know, I mean, hit, like I mean, for me, Beaujolais is hot right now. Oh. My, I'm obsessed right now with the 2009 vintage in Beaujolais. Oh. Not the Nouveau stuff that comes right. out, you know, like the crew stuff, Morgon, Milan Avant, real serious stuff. See, I don't get, I don't get that opportunity. You know, Daryl Hall, uh, when I did his show, we had a little wine thing, and and I was telling him that I I like to sample different wines every night in yep. the dressing room, and he's the exact opposite because he's you know, obsessed with a couple. Well, of things. I told him, you know, that every once in a while I get a, a miss, you know. Yeah. I mean, really, it's 50-50. You yeah, know, sometimes sure. you get really good, sometimes not so good, and and that's the reason he just sticks to a wine that he loves. Oh, he's making a huge mistake. Well, I'm, you know, I mean, huge mistake. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, yeah. The maybe I mean, so. the wine's the whole game is the journey of trying all new things. I mean, but, there's so know, many things in life that you can't try new things, you know. But with there, wine, and there's I, but there's so many great wines. So many. It's really difficult. For me, like I, you know, I have short-term memory. Like I, you know, I mean, <laughs> so which one I did I like? I yeah, I don't remember. Well, you know, you, so you know, it's two thousand ten. Yeah, I was gonna say it's two thousand ten. Yeah. Take a picture, a little text. Yeah, you but know? then you know what I do? I take a picture. I right. post it on the wine club. Everybody's yep. chatting about it. They buy it all, and it's gone. I, I forget it. I forget, <laughs> I forget. I forget what it was. I, you know, I have to go back to and look at the wine page you know, to something. see what's so, going on. So let's taste one while we continue this right. conversation because we've been talking a long time without drinking. Let's zoom in here a little. <laughs> Luna State two thousand six. Margaret River Riesling. This wine rolls in at 14 U.S. bones, 90 points. Uh, Jay Miller, have you ever had a Luna State wine? Yeah, I don't think so. So Luna State is a uh, very famous producer in Australia. Robert Mondavi, when he first went to Australia in 1974, discovered this you know property, this winery, and kind of anointed it as the creme de la creme in Australia. And where is it in Australia? In Margaret River. Well, because the reason I ask is we You guys are, were just there, right? No, we're going in January. Okay. Uh, we're going to do a tour with In Excess. Nice. And the, we're doing a nice. winery tour. We're really? playing all wineries on that whole tour. You're excited about that. Oh, man. So the other, guys, the other guys in the band, not so much into wine. You haven't been able well, to seduce them? I mean, they are, but uh, Pat quit drinking many years ago. Yep. Um, and so he's... Uh, yeah, he just, just I mean, he loves it. He'll, he'll smell it. He'll, 
Oh, yeah. We call it snippy snip on the show. Yeah. So he gives it a snippy snip. And oh, by the way, tell Hap no bullshitting like this. All up in the schnoz. It's got to be like that if yeah. you really want to smell. See, I'm learning little stuff like yeah. that still. Yeah. Like, even, like, uh, uh, you know, I learned that the longer, I mean, the people that, that watch your show sure. probably know all this stuff. No, but I mean, I'm we're all still we're, learning. We're really. all, all, I mean, why is that complicated? We're all still kind but of ratcheting. Is it learning. true? Somebody told me that the longer the, the stem on the yeah. bottle, the sweeter the wine. Is that true? That, that's an old myth because of German wines, and there was always uh, the kind of the brown glass versus the green glass. Yeah, yeah. There were some older German myths that have kind of gone away, but let's give this a snippy sniff. What are you getting on the nose? Mm, I am getting. It, I mean, it seems like it's going to be dry, not too fruity. Yeah, no, it's not fruity at all. As a matter of fact, what I'm getting on this nose, and tell me if you're getting this, it smells like an old BMX bike, like, burnt-out tire. Like, it, it smells, smells like, like tire. tire. Yeah, the tire. Oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> do, you, do you get this kind of petrol kind of, like, tire skin yeah. mark thing going on? Yeah, now that you mention it. I, I get a lot of that. I do get a little apple and pear, so there's some green fruit. But it's kind of like burnt out. Now, I know you guys always know there's always like a spit bucket here, but I'm not going to hang with a rock star and have like, you know, spit the wine. So. And you know what? I've got interviews to do all day. This is like one of the busiest days of the tour for me. So a couple of well, drinks is going to... That's what happens <laughs> when you hit NYC, right? This is really nice. Do you like so, this? Yeah, this is... Uh, I typically don't go for a Riesling. Okay. Um, because, because do you assume that they're sweet? Yes. Yeah. And, and now and you a lot of the German Rieslings are, are sure. sweeter. Um, but this one is really nice. It's It's... It's nice and dry. And so this is like extremely bone dry. It has really intriguing kind of like minerality, almost like crushed rock meets like, you know, mm. pears and apples. It's almost like a fruit salad with a couple stones thrown in there. I and mean, that's good. Um, it's got good acid. It's a really, really well-made wine. I'll and to me, back. yeah, sure. And to me, and to me, this wine really, are you about to take a picture of it? I love it. Yeah, I have to take a picture of it so um, I remember. To me, this is shown really well. I think uh, Jay Miller really knocks it out of the park with his score. I believe this is a 90-point scored wine as well. And $14, 14 bones. To me, this is a pretty exceptional value uh, within Riesling because, you know, you can really get 15 to $30 Riesling that can be kind of okay. This really hits the spot. Really dry, great, yeah. great by itself in his aperitif, but awesome if you want to go with, like, fish or, or salads. Yeah, it's really, it's, I love it. I'm going right. to look for this. Yeah, so on the Australian let's, uh, tour. oh, nice. <coughs> Take this. Let's move on to the next wine. Next, we have the K uh, Syrah Morrison Lane from Walla Walla, Washington. Uh, 38 bones. K Vintners, uh, an amazing rock star in his own right. If you ever get to meet the guy behind this, I think you guys will hit it off. Um, He's uh, That's in Pat's neighborhood. Yeah, t I, I know that this is kind of why we picked it. So, Pat is from Washington State, right? Well, he's actually from Erie, Pennsylvania. Okay. Born and raised, and then, uh, but he's lived Live in Seattle with his wife and family uh, for years now. Got it. Got yeah. it. So let's give this a sniffy sniff. This is Syrah based, really big wine. Uh, K Vintners is known for their intense structure, so you can see it's very dark. Little mm. sniffy sniff. Wow. Big licorice. Yeah. On the nose, blackberries. You yep. picking up anything else? Yeah. Um, It opens up quite a bit. It's a little, yeah, it little, does. Like it, 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 it's, uh, it's settled from the very first. Yeah, the first sniff was kind of, uh, but on like, this sniffy heavy. sniff, it kind of really opened up. Now, do you tend to like these kind of fruit forward? You know, when I think of people that are like getting into wine over the last 10, 15 years, especially San Francisco based, I think of people who really enjoy the big California Cabernets and Syrah's big wines. Very driven on like the big over the top American style. Is that is that where your palate well, is? I kind of do. Do you like the yeah. Silver Oaks and the Montalinas and all yeah. that stuff? In a red, I like I like that like yeah. the fruit, but it, I like a drier white. And you know what's interesting too? Uh, um, you know, I always drink red wine before a show for some reason. But when I'm uh, like casually drinking, like uh, you know, at home I, or with friends, yeah, I, I drink white. It's it's odd. Is there it, does red wine? Jazz you up more? No, I think the opposite. So you need to be mellow when you hit this scene uh, you on know, the stage. I, you know, I'm just like I'm a mellow personality. Yep. And I think that when I go on stage, I kind of, it brings out more of my personality. Interesting. To uh, yeah, I mean, I used to do other things before I go on stage <laughs> to, to, to bring out that personality. But you know, now, I, I, you now I just, that, uh, just, I just rely thing. on a red wine. So what do you think? What do you, what do you think about this? Let me taste.
Now, before you answer, Jim, this is imperative to me. They know on this show, I've done a, almost a thousand of these. I will dis a wine in a heartbeat. If it stinks, it stinks. If it's not for me, it's not for me. So, no, okay, you're stink. going the other way. Yeah. No, I'm going, yeah, I'm going the other way. Go ahead. It's really good. Is it it's, extremely smooth for you? Yeah, it's really smooth. It doesn't, uh, it, you know, it, it doesn't taste like it smelled to me, like like I was expecting something else. So that's that was my reaction when you saw that I tasted it. I was like, oh. It's it, smoother than I expected. You felt that this yeah. would have more of a bite because the it, nose was so intense. This is, yes. That's a great way to put it. Yeah. This is a very intense nose. And I think when people come across big, red, intense nose, especially if you have a loved one in your family that loves, you know, that doesn't like red wines, you know, when you smell it, it's like, oh, this is going to be a bitter kind of tannins are going to bother me. Yeah. But when you drink it, it is extremely smoothed out uh, because it's pretty oaked. There's a good amount of oak and vanilla action going on here, really which is silky and delicious. For me, it's a little hair much. It's kind of like makeup, you know? I feel like sometimes wine puts on too much makeup. Yeah. So, like, you know, it's kind of like Kiss, right? Like, we could all look like them at some level. You know, I want wine to have very distinct personality. This wine is a hair over-oaked for me, but still extremely well-made. Yeah. And, and has a delicious factor, which I think at the end of the day, you know... See, you, you, you know all the, uh, you know all the lingo. I'm like I'm like a. a well, a you know your stuff. stuff. Well, I you know, just put a guitar in my hands, and we're gonna have some real yeah, problems. See, I'm like that with guitars yeah. too. <laughs> like, uh, like I don't know all the technical stuff with guitars and all it? the gear. It's like, give me a guitar if it sounds right and feels good. I'll play it. Well, you know what? That's you know? how I feel and about like wine as well. I'm like that with and wine. you should be. And I think way too many people look up the ratings and how many vineyards yeah, and the acres, you know, you and it gets real technical. serious yeah. for sure. <laughs> real good wine. To me, you know, this rolls in like an 89, 88 plus point wine. The oak is bothering me for my palate. On the flip side, and I talk about this on the show a lot, there's wines that are for my palate and there's wines that I would buy for the store in a heartbeat because I know everybody would love them. This is a 90% you know, you know, happiness zone level wine. I would say 9 out of 10 people who drink this wine are going to appreciate it and enjoy it yeah. because it's, it's got delicious factor. I would be happy with this in my dressing room tonight. Yeah, well, you should take it then because I'm not taking it back. Oh, you know? No. I'd love to take it. <laughs> you got it. So listen, this is a tradition we do on the show. We let the guests ask the Vayner Nation any question they want, and you'll get hundreds of answers underneath. You know, so any question you want, it can be about wine, it could be about music, it could be about the Bears, it could be about Christmas, it could be about absolutely anything. Any question, fire away. Okay. My thought is, you know, a lot of people that come to our shows, especially in the summertime, uh, will have like parking lot parties and they, they come early. You know, it's almost like tailgating mm -hmm. at a football game, but for some reason like tailgating at a football game is more of a beer event, you mm -hmm. know? Sure. Where tailgating at a train concert seems to be more of a wine event. Um, and my question is, what kind of wine I like, like do you would you want to drink before a rock concert? Because I mean I, like I said, I, I typically drink whites. Yep. Uh, and then and then Chardonnays like cake red Chardonnays are my favorites. Yeah, nice. I love that. Um, Great people too. Yeah, they, yeah. It's a really nice little winery if you're ever in Northern California. But before a show, I always drink red. Uh, but I have a feeling if I was going to a rock concert and having wine before the concert, I would probably drink a Chardonnay. Because you're you're more in that. Ca this is yeah. almost like your professional wine, and Chardonnay is almost like your kind of like. Well, casual wine. Yeah, and it's also like, I mean, I can drink multiple glasses of, of Chardonnay. Like, yeah, you know, if it. I was going to a concert, I could drink got probably it. a bottle of Chardonnay. Of, you know, a bottle of Cabernet puts you to sleep? Too uh, mellow? Well, yeah, it's, I mean, you yeah. know, a glass of, of uh, you know, a, a nice Sarah. cab or something yep. before a show is, is all I need. You need to get there. Yeah. Listen, So yeah. continued success. Congratulations on a crazy year. Yeah, thanks. Answer that question. And make sure you check out their wine club. Really interesting stuff, and uh, they're pushing the envelope. I'm also hearing, you know, rumors of your own wine. I'm hearing rumors of a wine festival. I'm yeah. hearing a lot of exciting stuff. Yeah. Keep us in the loop for that. We'd love to be a part we of will. it. Yeah. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.